Let us see example 2.6. Two clocks are being tested against a standard clock in a national laboratory. At 12 hour 0 minute and 0 second noon, by the standard clock, the readings of two clocks are as shown below. Here you can see from Monday to Sunday, the readings of clock 1 and clock 2 is shown which is taken exactly at 12 hours of the standard clock. You can see the readings of clock 1. Clock 1's readings are mostly of 12 hour. You can see almost 12 hour. But the readings of clock 2 is nearly 10 hours. You can see all the readings are of 10 hours. Now what the question is, if you are doing an experiment that requires precision in measurement of time interval, which of the two clocks will you prefer? If you have been asked to use any of this clock with more precision because you are going to measure the time interval. So, for measuring time interval, it is required that the clock should be more precise. So, if you have been asked that which clock you will prefer, then obviously you will prefer a more precise clock, not a more accurate clock. For time interval, we require more precise clock, not the more accurate clock. So, we will find out which is more precise clock. Now, for that, the range of variation of time in 7 days for clock 1 if we see. Then, see, the largest reading of clock 1 is this one. 12 hour, 1 minute and 50 second. That is the largest. And the smallest value is on Wednesday, 11 hour, 59 minute and 08 second. So, the variation within this 7 days in this clock 1 is 12 hour, 1 minute and 50 second minus 11 hour, 59 minute and 08 second. So, you have to subtract them. Obviously, subtracting uh, 8 out of 50 means 50 minus 8 if we take that will be 42. Then this is 1. So, you uh, this is 1 and we have to subtract 59. So, you have to carry forward here from 12. But here we have to carry forward 60 not 1 because this is hour. So, when we carry 1 that is 1 hour but when we put here, it becomes minute. So, we have to write 60 minute. 1 hour is 60 minute. So, when we carry forward 1 from 12, we should write here 60. That means, this will be 61 now. Now, 61 minus 59, that is 2. So, this is 2 minute and 42 second. Again, 2 minute is 122 second. So, I am sorry, 120 second. So, as a whole, this becomes 162 second. So, the variation within 7 days in clock 1 is 162 seconds. That means, this clock 1 is varying maximum up to 162 second from its own time. Whatever time it is showing daily at 12 o'clock, it is varying. You can see all the observations are here, which is showing a variable time at exactly 12 hour. So, the maximum variation in this clock within this 7 days is 162 second. Now, if we take clock 2, then for clock 2, the largest value is here. 
10 hour 15 minute and 24 second and the smallest value is here that is 10 hour 14 minute and 53 second so the variation in this clock second clock is 10 hour 15 minute and 24 second minus 10 hour 14 minute and 53 second so i have to subtract 24 minus 53 that means you have to take a carry from 15 so when i take a carry from 15 i have to write here 60 because this is minute so when i take one minute here i have to put in form of second so i should put here 60 second so this will be 60 second plus 24 second that means 84 second now 84 second minus 53 is 31 second and then here it will be remaining 14 minus 14 will be 0 10 minus 10 will be also 0 so the total variation in 7 days in clock 2 is 31 second now here is a point see within this 7 days clock 1 is varying up to 162 second whereas clock 2 is varying just 32 second 31 second that means clock 2 is remaining very close to the readings what it shows daily at 12 o'clock or in other way we can say clock 2 is remaining uh, uh, very close to its readings that means clock 2 is more precise rather than clock 1 here you can feel like that clock 2 is showing 10 hour daily whereas we uh, whereas the right time was 12.000 that means 12 hour 0 minute 0 second and this clock 2 was not even showing 12 hour it was showing 10 hour but this is a matter of case of you know setting zero error only you just need to set the zero means you have to set this clock for 12 hour instead of 10 hour but the main point is the precision that it is precise because it is showing just 31 second of variation in 7 days that means clock 2 is more precise and that's why it is preferable for measuring the time interval now example 2.7 we measure the period of oscillation of simple pendulum in successive measurement the reading turn out to be 2.63 second 2.56 second 2.42 second 2.71 second and 2.80 second calculate the absolute error relative error and percentage error see here uh, an experiment is done to measure the periodic time of an oscillator and five readings are taken all are different so we need to find out absolute error relative error and percentage error before we go for this uh, we must remember again that we need true value in all the all of this uh, measurements so here obviously we don't have the true value we don't know what is the exact periodic time of this pendulum so when we don't know the true value we take the mean value as the true value so we'll start from that here the true value that means the mean value of the period of oscillation will be tm that is equal to 2.63 plus 2.56 2.42 plus 2.71 plus 2.80 divided by 5 there are 5 readings so divide by 5 that means it is 13.12 divided by 5 second so it comes to 2.624 second which we can write nearly equal to 2.62 second so 2.62 second is our true value or say mean value now we will find out the errors in every measurement 
you know while finding errors in every measurement you have to take a difference of the measurement and the mean value or say the true value so for every observation i will take t minus tm so the first observation is 2.63 minus tm is 2.62 gives us 0.01 second second observation is 2.56 so it is 2.56 minus tm is 2.62 that gives us minus 0.06 second further 2.42 minus 2.62 that gives us minus 0.2 second then 2.71 minus 2.62 gives us 0.09 second 2.80 Minus 2.62 gives us 0.18 second. So the mean absolute error in the period of oscillation now can be written as delta T M. And you know now we have to take mode of all these values because when we are calculating absolute error, we have to take all the values positive. so this is mode of 0.01 mode of minus 0.06 mode of minus 0.02 mode of 0.09 and mode of 18 that gives us 0.54 divide by 5 here we are taking mean value that's why we have to divide it by 5 so 0.54 divide by 5 that gives us 0.11 second so the absolute error average absolute error is 0.11 second thus the period of oscillation is 2.62 plus or minus 0.11 see this is the true value uh, and this is the mean absolute error we can say this is the true value or say it is the mean value and this is the mean absolute error so the oscillation of period is 2.62 plus or minus 0.11 second that means the period can be uh, can be minimum 2.62 minus 0.11 or it can be maximum 2.62 plus 0.11 now for relative error we know that relative error or say the fractional error is the ratio of mean absolute error divide by the mean value or say the true value that means delta tm upon tm so it is 0.11 by 2.62 that means it is 0.042 now if we take percentage error then percentage error is denoted by delta t and it is a multiplication of delta tm by tm multiplied by 100% means it is a percentage value of the relative error itself so relative error is 0.042 multiplied by 100% that gives us 4.2% means the percentage error in this measurement is 4.2% so we get here that when we have taken this observations how much is the maximum error in percentage mind well this is the maximum error in percentage that is 4.2 percent.